Hello and welcome to part two in my tutorial series on how to do physical modeling on the Kurzweil PC3. Uh, this uh, part two is actually going to be split into two videos uh, because the sound we're going to be do we're going to do is uh, a fairly in-depth example, and and I want to be sure to cover everything because there's a lot of nuances to the sound uh, that we're going to create. So let me show you essentially the uh, the end result. So this is P horn. Um, and this, this kind of, sort of, sounds like a tenor saxophone. Okay, so now that uh, I've showed you the program, let's go ahead and learn how to make it. So we're going to go ahead here, we'll hit edit, we'll pick zero for our key map. Um, I'm going to set up some uh, basics and then I'm going to duplicate this layer. This is a four layer sound and the first two, we're going to do the first two layers in this video and then we'll do two more layers in, in the following video. Uh, and, and so in this, this video we're basically, we're going to send up sort of the basic tonality of the horn and in the the next video we're going to set up the uh, formant filters and other things um, that, that that will bring it to life and, and make it sound more like a specific instrument so let's go ahead uh, we've set turned off our velocity tracking here let's go to the amp envelope page we're going to pick user and let's go to the fun page layers one and two of this sound are going to be used the same function to control mono pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up right now. So what this is going to do is this is going to make it easier to control the mono pressure. I use the default um, uh, pressure map and velocity map on my keyboard uh, and this just makes it easier to play the mono pressure and to control it for me. So you may want to adjust this value according to uh, what you prefer and try different numbers if you feel like the response isn't right. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the ALG page. I'm going to pick uh, 102 as my algorithm. And we're going to start by setting up two um, FM operators in series. This is a great thing about the PC3. We can mix and match all sorts of different synthesis types. So the, the, the meat of this sound is going to come from two FM operators. Okay. And the nice thing is with FM is when you increase the volume of, say, operator 1 going into operator 2, increase the gain, I should say, you get uh, sort of a brassier sound, which is exactly what we want if we're trying to emulate a horn. So let's go ahead and set up some modulation here. Uh, well, first of all, let's do some of the basic stuff. I'm going to set the pitch course here to minus 24 steps, and I'm going to put this on a slider. I'm going to pick slider B, and I'm going to set the depth to 4,800 cents. Okay, the gain, I'm going to set this to minus 6 dB, and I'm also going to uh, vary this, uh, but I'm going to vary this by attack velocity, okay, and it's going to be able to go up to 12 dB, and then um, I'm going to use function 1, which we've already set up, and I'm going to control the depth of that with the data slider and that's going to be able to uh, increase um, the gain by up to 24 dB so we can really dig in and, and get a really uh, brash sound out of our horn if we want to. Okay so for this gain block we're going to go down to minus 35 dB and I'm going to set up some similar stuff with attack velocity and mono pressure. So First, we're going to be able to go all the way up 35 dB with attack velocity. And second, um, and we'll put this on data slider again, we're going to be able to do the same with, um, with, with uh, mono pressure. Okay, finally, let's come down here to the level. Let's go to the DSP control page. Okay, so we already turned that off. All right, so we're good. So let's let me play this sound. So I have slider A most of the way up. If I turn slider A down, 
I don't be I'm not able to vary this with uh, with mono pressure. So you can hear this sound is is already um, somewhat like a horn. So let me there we go bringing the octave of the horn up a bit by changing this pitch uh, with the slider and bringing it up 1200 cents. Okay, so that's uh, the first layer. So now let's go ahead and uh, we're just gonna hit a dupe layer real quick. Um, this next layer isn't gonna look anything like this one, uh, but, but it's gonna have some of the same stuff on it. So that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it. So first of all, um, I'm gonna use this custom algorithm that I already created in order to um, make my life easier and to speed along the process here. So this algorithm has uh, one block before it mixes in the signal from uh, the previous layer. So I'm going to pick layer one as my input source and I got an LP noise um, block and that's going to be mixed with the preceding signal via X fade. So let's go ahead now and turn off these two blocks, put them at zero or at none I should say. Where is none? There it is. Let's go this way. I think it's quicker. And none. Okay. So now this is what the DSP should look like on layer two. Let's pop back up to layer one real quick and let's just go ahead and turn this all the way down. So we know that the signal we're hearing out of layer two when we get to that point is going to be coming completely from layer one. There we go. Okay, so now let's bring up X fade here. Okay, so now you can hear um, the noise quite a bit. So let's go ahead and bring down the pad. There we go. So you can hear this noise now that's coming out of uh, the LP noise block. I'm going to go ahead. On LP noise, I'm going to add um, a bit of key tracking. If you've ever just blown into a saxophone, not enough to make a noise, and you've changed the fingering, or you've blown into some other wind instrument, my, my personal experience is with the clarinet, you, you get sort of, you, you get slightly pitched noise basically and, and the pitch changes depending on which keys you have pressed down and so forth. So that's what this is going to emulate but it's not, doesn't track perfectly I don't think if my memory serves me correctly. So 50 cents per key is about enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up this X fade. So what I want to do with cross fading is I want the noise to um, to decrease as I play harder. So if I play softly, there's going to be um, a lot of noise, and as I play, as I decrease, I'm going to hear, um, or I'm going to have less noise. So I already have because um, I duplicated layer one. I already have my sources set up. So now I just have to change the amounts. So Attack velocity is going to be affecting this by minus 14%. And then my source 2 here, which is a uh, fun one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to just on because I don't uh, want to control the depth of the noise with the slider. And I'm going to put this to minus 14% as well. So I'm playing softly right now. Now I'm going to apply some mono pressure. So you hear that fade. Now I'm going to hit the note hard so there's no noise so you can hear um, we already have a sound that, that that's um, kind of responds in the same way as, as a horn might um, it's not there yet we still need to add in some more DSP and such to, uh, to get it the rest of the way there but um, already we have something that we can play with so before I end part one here, let's go to the common page. I'm going to go ahead and turn monophonic response on, legato response on, and portamento off. So now, I have something that responds more like a horn. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Uh, I'm going to do rename, and we're going to call this 
uh, toot horn, so tut horn actually. Uh, so that's mu and then h o r and I'm using the number pad to uh, type in these letters. You can also use the keys on the keyboard but I don't remember, I, I, I'm not very good at that uh, so I just use the numbers and hunt and peck. So let's go ahead and hit OK. We're going to save this as 1032 and there's our horn. <laughs> Okay, in the next video, uh, we're going to go over the final two layers of this sound and uh, end up with something that's, that's, that's more playable as an actual wind instrument. Thanks for watching, and I will see you then.